So far, our method is to, one, take our linear system and translate into a matrix. And then two, we know that we're allowed to use these three different elementary row operations. We can interchange rows, we can multiply rows by a non-zero constant, we can add a multiple of one row to another. However, that doesn't still give us a methodology because we don't know what order we're supposed to apply these elementary row oper operations in. We don't even know what the outcome we're hoping for is supposed to be. So what we're going to try to do in this video is to establish what our goal is going to be, what we want the elementary row operations to actually accomplish, and we'll see an example how we're going to make that work. So this, I claim, is a very nice form to have your matrix in. I want to suppose that along your main diagonal you have ones. That beneath your ones you have zeros and that above your ones I don't really care what you have so I'm just gonna put some stars here it doesn't really matter they're just placeholders and then in the constant matrix maybe you have an A, a B, and a C. I claim that this is a very nice result. It's so nice in fact you can't always do a bunch of manipulations that put it in this form but it'd be really nice if you could. Now the reason I claim this is nice is that Suppose I have this and now my objective is to try to solve my system. Well, I can read off this bottom row here and the bottom row tells me 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 1 times x3 is equal to the value of c. In other words, I can just look at this first row and just read off what the third value is. That's very convenient. And then if I know that, I can look at the second row here and now what this is going to give me is 0x1 plus an x2 and this is equal to the value of b and I'm going to subtract off, now I know I have this star here, I don't know what that value is, but it's, it's some number times that value of c that we have. And then I can do the same thing, I can go all the way to the first one and I can say that this is just going to be equal to the first component x1 is equal to the a on the far right and then it's just some number I don't know what it is times my x2 and then some number I don't know what that is times my x3. So I can do this sort of back substitution where I work from the bottom row up I figure out the x3 then the x2 then the x1 and that's why I think that things that are of this form are really convenient. Alright so let's do an example. Here I've given some linear system and I've written it out in terms of its augmented matrix. And what we want to do is we want to manipulate this system so that it looks like the goal that we had previously. And it's pretty good. I do have this one up on the top left hand corner and I have zeros underneath it so sort of already partly there. But then I have a few spots that, that don't look like my form. Uh, for instance, I'm going to focus first on this minus one right here. Now, if I look back to what the form that I wanted was, I wanted to have a positive 1 in that place, and here I have a minus 1. So I want to be doing a manipulation that is going to change this into a positive 1. And I could just multiply that row by minus 1. One of my EROs is I can multiply a row by a constant. So I'm going to multiply the second row by minus 1. So the way I'm going to write this is as follows. I draw a big arrow. And then I go and I say that row 2 is going to be replaced with minus row 2. Or in other words, row 2 is replaced with minus 1 times row 2. This sort of keeps, lets me keep track of what it is that I'm doing. And then when I write down my matrix, the first row doesn't change at all. 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0, nothing happened there. The second row is what's changing. I've multiplied by minus 1, so I have a 1, a 1, and a minus 3. And then the third row didn't change at all, so I'm copying and pasting the third row as well. I put my dot 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 in and there I go. So getting a little bit better. Now looking up at my template what do I want to have? Well underneath this one I want to have a zero. So that's my next challenge that I'm going to be faced with. Namely I want to have a zero appearing in that location. Okay now I have to be a little bit more careful here. How do I manipulate this? Well if I do anything like adding row 1 and row 3 together, it's going to screw up this, this 0 that I have in this first component. So I certainly don't want to do that. But what I could do is I, I could take twice the second row, twice the second row, and I subtract it from the third row, 
And I think that should clear out this particular two. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to draw another arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm replacing row three. So it's my row three that's changing. And what's happening here is it's going to be what the current row three is, but I am going to subtract off twice row one. So let's see how that works. Since I'm manipulating the third row, the first two rows just copy and paste. So one minus two minus three, zero, zero, one, one minus three. So I haven't changed the first and second row at all, but it's the third row that I'm changing. In place of the third row, I put the current third row and then I subtract off two times the second row. So zero minus twice the second row, which is another zero, doesn't change that first component at all. Then in the third component here, in the third row, I have a two. I'm subtracting off twice one, so two minus two, that's a zero. That's what I wanted. I can kind of anticipate it because that was my whole goal. Then one minus twice one, that puts a minus one here. And finally, eight minus twice of minus three, that's like a minus six. And since I'm subtracting a minus six, it's like adding six. So eight times six is 14. Now this last step is a little bit up to you. If you read off the, the third row here, I think it's actually sufficient because I could say minus one X three is equal to 14. And I know that that would mean that X three is minus 14. But if you prefer the sort of formalistic way here is to say, look, I'm going to fix the minus one that I have right down here. That's the problem. And I'm going to take R3 and send it to minus one times R3. And that gives me the matrix copying and pasting the first two rows. Nothing changes here. Zero, one, one, minus three. Zero, zero, one, minus 14. And now I'm in that ideal form that I'm hoping for. Now, my final step, I'm not done yet, is to go through and figure out what is my x1, what is my x2, and what is my x3. And in D, we're actually going to figure out those backwards. We're going to do something referred to as back substitution. And the way it's going to work is that, first of all, I'm going to look down here at this third row. And that, I can just read it off. 0 plus 0 plus x3 is equal to minus 14. And remember here that the whole magic of this matrix notation is that the matrix notation hid the variables x1, x2, and x3. So I didn't have to write them down every time. But they are still there. It's just notation. This bottom row is the linear equation. 0 plus 0 plus 1x3 is equal to minus 14. All right, so now I have that. Now let's go and look into the second row here. So my second row is going to tell me 0x1 plus x2. And I'm going to manipulate it around. I'm going to say it's the minus 3. And then I'm subtracting off an x3. But I know what x3 is. So this is minus 3 minus minus 14. In other words, plus 14. And so this is equal to the value of 11. And then finally, if I want to go and look at this first row here, this first row is going to tell me that x1 is equal to, well, I had a 0 on the far right. And then I'm going to add twice x2, and I'm going to add 3 times x3. So that's taking the minus 2 and the minus 3 and moving them over to the other side. But since I know values for these, this is twice x2 is 11 and then plus three times minus 14. And then this is 22 over here. And then 30 minus 42 is what we have over here. And so if I look at this, it is the value minus 20. And that was going to be my x1. So I have my x1 determined. I have this was my x2. And this was my x3. So. If we can put them in this nice form by doing these EROs, then I can just do this back substitution and I get three different values.